I'm excited to share with you a testimony that is anchored in uh, Acts chapter 16 in the conversion of the Philippians jailer. I want to begin reading in verse 30. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your whole household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all the others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. My wife, Didi, and I have clung to this scripture that the Philippian jailer, he and his whole household were saved for the duration of our marriage. My wife, Didi, came to know the Lord after we met in college, and we would routinely pray for her family, reminding God of the Philippian jailer and his whole family. Time prevents me from sharing the entire story, but suffice to, fa- to say that Didi was from a broken home. Her mom was uh, lived a dis- dysfunctional life that arose out of a divorce from her father, her, Didi's father. We would remind ourselves uh, that, but Lord, the Philippian jailer, he and his whole household, his whole family were saved. To be honest, there were probably instances and significant seasons when we neglected to pray that prayer. Uh, Perhaps we were negligent or lacking in faith or busy or just really wondered, God, how? But I'm happy to report that Didi's mom embraced uh, God's forgiveness for her sins and extended forgiveness to others less than 24 hours before she passed away on Thursday, January 12th, 2023. As we reflect back over the 35 plus years of our marriage, regardless of our actions or inaction, God was still working. For the last three years, we experienced the following miracles, and they are truly miracles if you know our story. Didi's mom permitted us to sell our house in Rochester, Minnesota, where she lived, which was more than seven hours from us. She required the care of an assisted living, and amazingly, in the, the hometown of Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota, nobody would call me back. There wasn't room at the inn, but there was something immediately available in Ellendale, North Dakota, just six blocks from where we lived, and the sale of her house made that possible. Her level of care increased, and as the cash from the sale of her house ran dry, an opening across town with a nursing home was available, and Medicaid kicked in. For the past two years, we were able to see her play games twice a week, and honestly, even for as cantankerous as my mother-in-law was about living in a nursing home, it was good. It was time we never imagined we'd be able to experience. Unexpectedly, just following wonderful Christmas visits from Dee Dee's family to include her sister and some grandchildren, she found herself in the hospital and quickly declined. But on Wednesday night, January 12th, we did some kingdom business in hospital room 321. Can I remind you today that God is still working? Even when we are not, or perhaps we've even given up. From his jail cell in Rome, Paul reminded the Philippians in chapter 1, verse 6, and we've clung to this verse too, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, even unto the day of Christ Jesus. Don't give up praying and believing for that lost one. Remember, the Philippian jailer and his whole household were saved. God bless you.